In this tutorial, we are going to solve some practice questions under Newton's laws of motion. So I've got a number of questions with me here. So let's start with this question. So the question is saying the flow of a railroad flat car is loaded with a loose boxes of medicine having a coefficient of static friction of 0.25 with the flow. If the train is initially moving at a speed of 48 km per hour, in how short a distance can the train be stopped at a constant acceleration without causing the box to slide over the floor? Okay, so it is very very important for us to understand the question. After understanding the question, we need to come up with a free body diagram. Okay. So now let's let's assume to say this is the level line, or let's just say this is the this is the road, okay? So we are going to assume that this flat car it was moving, okay? Here is our flat car. This flat car is moving at a constant velocity. Once something is moving with constant acceleration, in short here they are saying constant acceleration. Okay, so now we are trying to find. Uh, we are trying to find the what? We are trying to find the the distance. Okay, so initially we can see that we have the mu value to be zero point two five. What else do we know? We can also see that we have the initial velocity. The initial velocity is forty eight kilometers per hour. Now from here, what else do we know? We can see that um, they are saying that if the train is initially moving at this, in how, so for it to stop, meaning that the final velocity is going to be zero at that point. Okay, so we assume that it started from this point all the way to this point, meaning that at the last point here, the final is zero, the final velocity, the initial velocity here we have been given. Now we have to convert this velocity into meters per second. To do to do that, we are going to use dimension analysis. We are going to say 48 kilometers per one hour is going to be times in one kilometers. How many meters do we have? We have a thousand meters. Again, in one hour, how many seconds do we have? I've got 3,000, 300 seconds. Now we can see that kilometers and kilometers will cancel. Hour and hour will also come. We'll also cancel. What are we going to have? We're going to have a 48 times a thousand. Then we divide it by 3600. I'm getting the velocity now to be 13.33 meters per second. Now we want to find the um the what? We want to find the um, the acceleration in this um the distance in this case. If we can check here, the only force which is acting in this object, we can see that we have only friction force. When the car was moving in this direction, there is a friction force which was opposing the motion. Okay? Therefore, we need to find the acceleration. The, the same constant acceleration. So we're going to say the summation of all the forces in x direction, because we have got the motion in x direction, right? So we're going to say the summation of all the forces in x direction, we're going to say that we're going to have the only force which is acting at that point is um, the the friction force. So that friction force, since it, it was opposing the motion, it is it's going to be negative. So we're going to get that acceleration to be negative. So what are we going to do now from there? We can see that the next thing which we're going to do is um we're going to say the summation of all the forces in x direction we have got the friction force only but this friction force is supposed to carry negative because it is opposing the motion and remember it is decelerating so the acceleration is going to be negative according to two second law it's going to be mass times acceleration is equal to negative mu times normal force normal force in this case is going to be mg so we're going to have at mass times acceleration is equal to mu times mg we cancel the mass, we cancel the mass, we can see that 
acceleration is going to be uh, negative 0 0.25 times 9.8 so what is 9.8 times 0 0.25 so I'm getting my acceleration to be negative acceleration to be negative 2.45 meters per second squared now that we have our acceleration now we can find the what the distance since we don't have time the only formula which can work is a third equation where we're going to say the final velocity initial squared times 2a d remember the final velocity is 0 the initial is 13.33 squared plus 2 acceleration is negative 2.45 times d so we shift this to the other side it's going to be negative 13. 3 squared plus or this is going to be equal to then we're going to have 2 times 2.45 so this is going to give us 4.9 d which is negative so we divide both sides by negative 4.9 even here by negative 4.9 negative or negative will cancel therefore our distance is going to be 13.33 squared we divide it by 13.33 squared we divide it by 4.9 so I'm getting my distance to be 36.26 meters so this is going to be the distance now so that is it for this question number two in a pickup game of dome shuffleboard medical student crazed by final exams use a broom to propel a calculus book along the dome a hallway if the 3.5 kg book is pushed from rest through a distance of 0 0.9 meters by a horizontal uh, force of um, 25 newtons from the broom and then has a speed of 1.6 meters per second what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the book and the from now to find the uh, the coefficient of um, friction what we have to understand is that uh, let's assume to say this is the flow now the book was being propelled in this direction let's assume to say this is the book okay we assume that here is our book so if this is our book then there is a force which is being applied the force which was used to propel this one was um, 3.5 newton or it's 25 newton sorry so the force is uh, 25 newton then there is friction which is opposing motion the mass of this uh, book is just basically 3.5 kgs okay now initially we know that uh, they are saying that it was pushed from rest meaning from rest the initial velocity is zero then the final velocity is the one which have been given uh, 1.6 meters per second what else do we know the distance is uh, the distance it moved is 0 0.90 meters now the question is we need to find the coefficient of friction so we know that we are going to say to find the coefficient of friction we are going to say the summation of all the forces in x direction since it was moving we are going to have acceleration in this case we have got the applied force which was pointing which is pointing toward the positive x axis minus the friction force friction force always carries negative because it is opposing the motion okay so in this case since there is acceleration we replace this with mass times acceleration so we're going to say mass times acceleration is going to be the force minus it. this is going to be mu times it, the normal force but we know that the normal force is mg so we're going to say mass times acceleration is going to be force minus mu then you have mg remember our goal is to find the mu value so what we're going to do here is I'm going to shift this to the right hand side and then I'm going to shift everything here to the left hand side so we're going to end up having 
nu times mg is going to be equal to the force this force remains here minus because I'm shifting this to the right hand side minus mass times acceleration so we can now divide both side okay we can now divide both side by mg so let's rewrite it we have force minus him this we divide it by mg even here by mg you can see that these two they are going to cancel our mu k is going to be the force minus mass times acceleration divided by mass times g now this is our formula but remember we have everything we have the force which is at 25 the mass we have we don't have acceleration now we have another information here which can help us to find the acceleration so the mu k in this case let's let's just put our formula here so let's get rid of this now we have this information here this information can help us to find the acceleration okay since we don't have time the only formula which can help us is the third equation this equation let's start now plugging in the values the initial velocity um, the final velocity is 1.6 I square it the initial is 0 then you have 2 we're trying to find acceleration the distance is 0 0.9 let's see so we have 1.6 squared if you want you can find it in advance then you're going to have 0 0.9 times 2 which is 1.8 1.8 times m we divide it by 1.8 even here by 1.8 we can see that acceleration is going to be 1.6 squared divided by 1.8 so I'm getting my acceleration as 1.42 1.422 meters per second squared now that we have our acceleration let's plug in the values in this formula mu k is going to be the force is 25 minus the mass we have been told that is 3.5 times the acceleration 1.422 then we divide it by the mass which is 3.5 times 9.8 now let's see what we're going to have let's see what we're going to have so our mu k is going to be we have um, we have um, 3.5 times 1.422 is giving me 4.977 then 25 minus 4.977 so on top there I'm getting a 20 then I divide this by 9.8 times times um, 3.5 this is giving me 34.3 34.3 so our mu k is going to be 20 divided by 34.3 which is 0 0.58 so 0 0.58 is going to be my mu value now what we need to understand again here is uh, um, this is the coefficient of friction coefficient of friction is always less than 1 so when you are when you are calculating coefficient of uh, friction when you discover that the answer is uh, greater than 1 just know that the answer is wrong so the coefficient of friction always the mu k or the mu s is always less than 1 okay so in this case the answer is 0 0.58 okay number three a bedroom bureau for an anonymous medical doctor at the university teaching hospital UTH in Lusaka with a mass of 45 kg including drawers and clothing rest on the floor but a if the coefficient of static friction between the bureau and the floor is 0.45 what is the magnitude of the minimum horizontal force that the doctor must apply to start the bureau moving but b if the drawers and clothing with 17 kg mass are removed before the bureau is pushed what is the new minimum magnitude okay 
So now, um, like I said, once we come up with a free body diagram, this question is going to be very much easy for us. So we need first to understand the question. So we're going to 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 assume to say he is a patient. Okay. Now this is the combination of uh, the clothes. Let's put clothes in white. Let's say these are clothes. Then in 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 blue, let's put uh, to say this is uh, this this is a drawer. Okay. So the mass, the combination of um, the drawer, the patient, and the clothes is uh, 45 kgs. That's the combination. 45. So now, they are saying that when you force, you are going to push a force here, which let's call F. Then they are saying that they are saying that there is a friction which is opposing the motion. So they are saying that a minimum, they are saying that uh, the coefficient of static friction, so static friction meaning it was not moving at all. So we are going to have Fs. So now what we are going to do here is, uh, since this object is not moving, meaning that the net force is zero in this case, we are going to say the summation of the forces in next direction. We have got the applied force which is uh, pushing an object. Uh, toward the positive x-axis minus the friction force. And remember the net force is zero. We'll press this with zero. Because we're talking about how can you know that this is um, the net force is zero here? Because we're talking about static friction. Static friction meaning an object is not moving. Static friction is a friction which is going to be there when the object is not moving. Once the object starts moving, then that static friction is going to be converted to kinetic friction. Okay? So meaning that this is going to be zero. It's going to be the friction, the force minus this is going to be mu times the normal force. Normal force is mg. We shift this to the other side. We're going to have mu mg is equal to the force. Our goal is to find this force. We have everything. The mu value is 0 0.4 times the mass is 45 times 9.8 it's going to be equal to the force so we have 0 0.45 times 45 times 9.8 so I'm getting my answer to be 198.45 that would be the minimum force 198.45 so that would be the magnitude of the minimum horizontal force that the doctor must apply to start the, the barrel moving, as simple as that. Now, part B is saying the same thing which we have here, what if you remove the clothes and drawers? So they're saying that the combination of drawers and clothes is 17 kgs, meaning that we need just to say 45 minus 17. That is going to be the mass of uh, the person. So 45 minus 17 is 28, meaning the mass of the person only was 28. Now what would be the minimum force required for this barrel to start moving? So we're going to do the same. Summation of the forces in the next direction, we have the force minus in the friction force. This net force is zero this minus mu times the normal force. I shift this to the other side, left hand side. It's going to be mu normal force is equal to the force. Normal force is mg. It's going to be the force. The mu is the same, 0 0.45 times the mass. Now it's 28 times it. Uh, we have now the g which is 9.8 is going to be equal to the force. So the force required in this case is going to be 28 times 9.8 times 0 0.45. So this is giving me 123. 123.48. That that is going to be our minimum force which is required um, to push the water. The bureau. So that is it for question three. 
so we have question four which is saying a slide loving nursing slides down a certain 35 degree slide is in twice the time it would take to slide down a frictionless 35 degree slide what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the nurse and the slide now let's understand this question first so understanding this question is going to help us to know what's happening here so we have two things we have got the is uh, on an incline actually so we have got this incline okay so the first incline they're saying that it, there is friction something is riding at an angle of 35 degrees so here is an object which is riding it's moving in this direction so there is friction here which is opposing the motion and we know that eh, on an incline fg is the one which is pulling an object down so this is uh, with friction now with friction but there is another one which is happening here without friction you can put it here so there is another one which is happening without friction the angle is the same 35 degrees here is our, our, our object but there is no friction meaning that there is only fg which is pushing an object down so we are going to say this is with friction now the question here is saying a slide loving is slide down a certain 35 degrees right in twice the time it would take to slide down frictionless the one without friction meaning that it, let's say the time with friction is just t okay or let's call let's say this is um one and this is two okay so let me put t1 here meaning that the time one they're saying that this time has to be twice when we have what when there is no friction meaning that this is the same as the time for 2 is going to be the same as 2 times t1 okay 2 times t1 2 times t1 because they're saying that from this point here they're saying that um, a, sli a slide loving Nessie slide down a certain 35 degrees slide in twice the same the uh, in twice the time it would be or it would take the slide down a frictionless so if there is no friction meaning that this time times two so that's the equation which I have here meaning that once I put this this is going to be the same as this guy here so meaning that these two guys are going to, to cover the same distance once we have this information which you have here now what we need to understand again is that we need to find the acceleration okay finding acceleration is going to help us um, so we're going to find the acceleration for this equation here okay once we find the acceleration for this one meaning that we are going to put also uh, once we find this acceleration this is going to be the same acceleration which we are going to use here okay because we have made this equation to be the same so we're going to say the summation of the forces with friction okay this one is supposed to be without friction so here we don't have friction it's supposed to be without friction without friction so without friction we can see that eh, the summation of the forces we're going to have eh, only fg fg on an incline is mg sin theta so we're going to replace this with mass times acceleration is going to be mg sin theta now on an incline whenever we're talking about the normal force is mg cos theta let me just remind you then fg is a uh, mg sin theta now here we can cancel the mass and we can see that acceleration is going to be g sin theta let's see our g is 9.8 sin 35 degrees and we're going to see that our acceleration is going to be 
0.62 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration now. Now we are saying that at this point the distance is going to be the same. Okay. So if the distance is going to be the same, what are we going to do now from here? Okay. So now we have the acceleration for this one. What is the acceleration for the first one, for the second one? So for the second one, the summation of the forces in x direction is going to be we have the Fg trying to pull an object down. But the friction force is, is opposing the motion. So we're going to have mass times acceleration is going to be equal to Fg is mg sine theta minus uh, friction force is mu times the normal force. Normal force on an incline is mg cos theta. Now from here we can see that we can cancel the mass. I cancel this mass, I cancel this mass, I cancel this mass. We're going to see that acceleration is going to be g sine theta minus mu g cos theta as simple as that now we have that we want to find the coefficient of friction that is our acceleration so now let's do this we're going to to say this is the ta this is the acceleration for for one i'll put acceleration for one this is acceleration for two so let me just put it here. Acceleration for 1 is 5.62 meters per second squared. Then what of acceleration for 2? Acceleration for 2 we only have the formula which is, uh, I'll put it here on top. Acceleration for 2 is uh, G, I can even factor out G. I'll say, okay, G sin theta minus mu g cos theta now from here we can see that the distance is going to be the same like we have said since we have made these two guys to be the same meaning the distance is going to be the same so i'm going to have two formulas since we have time the formula which we're going to use in this case we're going to use this d is equal to v initial times t plus half a t squared now remember, our initial velocity is zero, so this is going to be cancelled. So this is the d for one. I'm I'll start for one. So I have half acceleration one t squared. Okay. So t one. This is going to be t one. I'm going to put t one here. Okay. So this is the formula for the first one. So I'm going to say d two or d one is going to be equal to half a one t squared as simple as that now let's go to um, 2 2 we can see that if we use the same formula we're going to have d 2 is going to be v initial times t 2 plus half a 2 uh, t 2 squared now what we're going to do here is the initial velocity is 0 started from rest we're going to cancel this so d2 is going to be, to make time to be the same, I'm going to say this is the same as 2 times t1 squared, meaning the time now is the same. So I can simplify this and say it's half a2, then 2, this is going to be 4 t squared. Okay? So now what I'm going to do now from here is, this is uh, 2 squared and t1 squared. So now the time is the same, the distance meaning d1 and d2, they are going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put where there is d1 with d2. So let me just put this equation here. d2 is half, then a2, we have 4 d1 squared. So now d1 is equal to d2. So d1, now I no longer need this. I can see that my d1 is, um, my d1 is half a1 t squared. It's going to be equal to d2 is half a4, a2 times 4, then t1 squared. From here we can cancel the half. Then you're going to have a1 t squared. t now is the same. Okay. The t is the same, t1. Then here we also have uh, 4 a2 t1 squared. 
At this point, we can also cancel the what the time because the time is the same. So we cancel this t. We cancel also this t. You can see that a one is going to be equal to is going to be equal to four a two. Let's plug in the values. What is our a? Our a one is um is fifty five point five point six two is going to be equal to four. What is our our a two? Our a two is a g sine theta minus okay minus mu g cos theta. Remember, our goal is to find the mu value. Now I can get rid of everything here to create space. I'll remove this. Then I'm going to say I have 52 or 5.62 is going to be I can distribute 4 which is going to give me a 4 g sin theta minus 4 mu g cos theta. I can shift this to the left hand side or I can shift this to the left hand side and then I shift this to the right hand side. So it's going to be 4 mu g cos theta is going to be equal to 4 g sin theta minus 5.62 we divide everything by 4 g cos theta even here 4 g cos theta so we can see that the mu k is going to be equal to 4 g sin theta minus 5.62 everything divided by 4g cos theta. Let's plug in the values we see what we're going to have. So we can see that the mu k in this case is going to be we have a 4 times 9.8 sine 35 minus 5.62 down here we have 4 times 9.8 cos 35 so what will be our mu value? We get rid of this. You can see that our mu k is going to be what is 9.8 times 4? 39.2. So 39.2 sine 35. The answer I'm finding I'm finding 22.48 minus 5.2. Six two. So on top there, I'm getting sixteen point eight six four. Okay, let's see what we're going to have down there. We have four point nine. Okay, four point nine. Oh, we have uh, four times nine point eight down there. Thirty two point nine. So thirty two point nine. Thirty two point nine cos thirty five. So down here I'm getting a 26.95. So the mu k is going to be um the mu k is going to be we're going to have a 16 16.864 divided by 26.95. So I'm getting my answer to be 0 0.6, 0 0.62. That is my mu value. Okay. In this tutorial, we are going to solve a question under Newton's laws of motion. So here's a question for you. A 2.5 kg medical equipment is initially at rest on a horizontal surface. A horizontal force F of magnitude 6 newtons and a vertical force P are then applied to the equipment as shown below. The coefficient of friction for the equipment and the surface are mu S is equal to 0 0.4 and mu K is equal to 0 0.25. Determine the magnitude of the friction force acting on the equipment if the magnitude of P is uh, part A, 8 newtons, B, 10 newtons, and C, 12 newtons. So initially they are just asking us to find the uh, friction force. But see, we have got two things here. 
two things are involved. When an object is moving, then there is friction. The friction which is present when an object is mo moving is what we call the kinetic friction. Then, when an object is not moving, the object is just at rest. If there is friction there, the friction which is present at that particular point is um, static friction. Now, we have been given the uh, coefficient of uh, static friction and coefficient of uh, a kinetic friction. Our goal is to determine the friction force, the magnitude of the friction force. But remember, we have two things here. Now, our goal here, we have first to find, in each, uh, in each case, we have to find the f uh, static friction. Now, why are we saying that we have to find the static friction? It's just simple. We have been given the force. The force which was being applied here, it is uh, 6.0 newtons. Okay? So, if we find the static friction, once we discover that the static friction is greater than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say this object was moving. Okay, we are going to conclude to say this object was not moving. Therefore, the friction which is going to be present at that point is going to be the static friction. Meaning that the answer which we are going to find, that is going to be our answer in that case. Okay? Now, if we discover to say, we find that the mu s is less than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say, the object was, was moving. Now, if the object was moving, then we expect to have kinetic friction. Then we are going to find now kinetic friction. So, this is going just to give us a hint to say, do we have static friction or kinetic friction? Then if we don't have, if, if, if the mu s is greater than f, then you expect to have static friction. We remain there, that is going to be our answer. If we discover to say the mu s, the static friction is less than the, is less than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say, in this case, the object is going to be moving. If the object is going to be moving, we expect to have kinetic friction. If there is kinetic friction, let's find that kinetic friction. So, meaning kinetic friction in that case is going to be our answer. Now, we know that friction force is given, uh, so we are going to start with uh, static friction. Static friction is given by mu s times the normal force. Now, how do we find the normal force in this case? To find the normal force, we can see here that we have three things involved. So we are going to have the forces which are acting in y direction we have got in. the downward force which is the mg which is the weight force. Then you also have the upward force which is going to be the normal force. But we still have another force which is p. So we are going to say the summation of the forces in y direction is going to give us the forces which are acting upward we have got the normal force plus the P, then minus mg, which is pointing downward. I'm going to replace this one with zero because we, this object is going to be moving in x direction. So we don't have, the net force in y direction is going to be zero. So zero is going to be equal to the normal force plus the P minus mg. My goal is to find the P or the, no, uh, the, uh, the normal force, I'm going to shift these two guys to the left hand side. If I shift those two guys to the left side, we are going to discover to say, we are going to have, uh, I'm going to shift mg, mg is going to be now mg, instead of negative it's going to be positive because it has crossed the equal sign. So this is going to be minus p, has to be equal to the fn. What it means here is, um, where there is fn in this equation, we are going to replace with what? This mg minus p. That is going to be our general formula in this case. So we are going to have the mu s, the fs to be equal to mu s open brackets mg minus the p. So this is going to be our general formula. So this formula, I am going to put it here. We have the fs to be equal to the mu s mg minus p. Now, when we discover that we have friction force, then it's going to be the mu k, but we're going to have the same thing. Now, see, 
we want to find part A, let's see what we're going to have. So first we have to find the static friction. That static friction, that's uh, after finding the static friction, that's when we're going to conclude to say we have got static friction or the kinetic friction. If we, we see to say the static friction is less than the applied force or is greater than the applied force. So the friction, the static friction is going to be the mu s mg minus the p. We have been told that the mu s is 0 0.4, mass is 2.5 times 9.8 which is g, minus the p we have been told that the p is 8 in that case. So we're going to say 0 0.4, I'll start with what is in, uh, in the brackets, 2.5 times 9.8, answer I'm getting 24.5 minus 8, then I do this times 0 0.4. So the static friction which I'm getting is 6.6 6.6 newtons Now let's conclude 6.6 newton is greater than the applied force Therefore we expect to have static friction So we're going to say that Since this is greater than the applied force We expect this object not to move So Meaning that in this case, if this object is not going to move, meaning that um, the applied force is, the, is equal to the static friction. Meaning that our friction force in this case is going to be 6. It's going to be the same as this one. Okay, It's going to be 6 newtons. Because if the static friction is equal to the kinetic or is equal to the applied force, then that object is not going to move. Now we have concluded to say the static friction is greater than the applied force. We expect our friction force to be equal to the applied force. So in this case, this answer is just giving us a hint to say the friction force which is going to be present is going to be the static friction. So static friction is going to be equal to the applied force for it not to move. Okay, so in this case, the answer is going to be the same as 6.0 newtons, as simple as that. Now, part 2, which is part B, let's see what we're going to have. We're going to use the same formula. This F um, is going just to, to give us a hint to say, what do we have? Is it the static friction or the kinetic friction? So let's plug in the values. 0 0.4, 2.5 times 9.8. Minus the P now we've been told that is 10. What would be our mu S in this case? 2.5 times 9.8. I'm getting 24.5 minus 10. I'm getting 14.5 times 0 0.4. So this is giving me 5.5. Or 5.8 newtons. Now 5.8 newtons is less than. So this Fs, the static friction is less than the applied force. Therefore, we expect this object to be in motion because the applied force is greater than the, fric the, the static friction. So once the object is, go if this object is going to be in motion, we expect to have the kinetic friction. So this is just giving us a hint to say we have the kinetic friction. Therefore, we reverse this and now find the what? The static friction. So the static friction, that is going to be our, our answer now in this case. So we're going to say... <laughs> The FK, the formula now is going to be this. It's the same, but we're just changing a few things. So the mu K, mg minus the P. Let's see. So we have 0 0.25, that is our mu value. 2.5 times 9.8 minus the P is 10. So I'm going to have 2.5 times 9.8. I'm getting 24.5 minus 10. I'm getting 14.5, which was the same, times now 0 0.25. So now I'm getting the my friction force in this case, the magnitude of the friction force is going to be 3.625 3 newtons, which is the same as we can say 3.63 newtons, as simple as that. So in this case, this is going to be our friction force for part, in, eh, for part B. Now let's go to part C. So part C, we first need to find the static friction so that we see if the static friction is going to be greater or less than uh, 
the applied force. So the static friction is going to be mu s mg minus the p. We expect to have 0 0.4, 2.5 times 9.8 minus the p now is 12. So we're going to have 2.5 times 9.8 minus 10 or minus 12 times 0 0.4. So I'm getting 5 newtons. What would be our conclusion? This is less than me. So the Fs is less than the applied force. Therefore, this object is going to be in motion. If this object is going to be in motion, we expect to have kinetic friction. So we reverse and find now the static friction or the kinetic friction. So we go there and find now the what? The kinetic friction. So we're going to say the kinetic friction is going to be mu k mg minus the p. So the mu k is 0 0.25. 2.5 is our mass. 9.8 is our g minus 12. So what will be our kinetic friction? 2.5 times 9.8 minus 12 times 0 0.25. So I'm getting my answer to be 3. Point one two three newtons meaning I can round it off and say one point one three point one three newtons so this is going to be my friction force in that case so that is it for this uh, question thank you for watching this video question six a radiographer baseball player with mass M, 75, 79 kgs, sliding into a second base, is retarded by a friction force of magnitude 470 newton. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k between the radiographer and the ground? Okay, so now to find this question, or to find the uh, coefficient of uh, kinetic friction, let's first understand the question we can see that there is only one force which is acting on this object. So let's assume to say, here is our free body diagram. Then we have this object having a mass of 79 kgs. The only force which is acting here, they are saying that there is friction force which is opposing the motion. This object is going in this direction. Okay, it's moving in this direction. But we have not been told the force which is pushing an object to go in this direction. So now what we're going to do here is, uh, we're going to say the summation of the forces, we want to, in short, we want to find the friction force, the, the mu k. And we know that we've been given the force, the friction force already. We can just say, the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. Now the normal force in this case is going to be mg because we know that eh, there is the weight of this object and the normal force pointing upward. Therefore, the summation of the forces in y direction is not moving in y direction, the net force is zero. The normal force minus the weight force. From there, what I'm going to do, this is going to be zero. The normal force minus mg. So the normal force will be equal to mg. This, this weight force is just basically mg. So this is going to be like this. So I'm going to say the normal force will be equal to mu times mg. We want to find the value of mu. Okay. So to find the value of mu, we can see that the, the friction force is 450. The mu is the one we are trying to find. The mass is... um. 79 times 9.8 so we have 450 mu k what is 79 times 9.8 this gives me 774.2 we divide it by 774.2 
774.2 these two are going to cancel out so we cancel this we can see that our mu k is going to be 450 divided by 774.2 so this gives us 0 0.58 as simple as that. So that is it for question 6. So here is our question 7. So the question is saying Muhozi is a female student majoring in pharmacy at the University of Zambia Ridgeway campus. She pushes horizontally with a force of 220 newtons on a 50, uh, 55 kg crate containing medical supplies to move it across a level from the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.35 what is the magnitude of the friction force and the acceleration so this is the um, the flow so let's assume that she was pushing this so they're saying that the mass is 55 kgs so she was pushing it using a force of she was pushing it using a force of 220 newtons but there is friction which is opposing motion and we've been told that the mu k is um, 0 0.35 so now what is the magnitude of the friction force and the great acceleration now to find friction force we know that friction force is equal to mu times normal force normal force in this case is going to be mg the only force which you have in y direction you have mg pointing downward and the normal force so we don't have the, the net force is zero in y direction therefore fn is going to be equal to mg so we're going to have the mu value the mu k times mg so the coefficient of uh, freak, uh, the friction in this case we're going to have 3.0.35 times the mass 55 times 9.8 this is going to be the fk is going to be 0 0.35 times 55 five, times 9.8 so this gives me 188.65 newtons so this is my friction force now part B is saying find the crates acceleration now to find the crates acceleration what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to say the same since an ob this object is moving x direction we're going to say the summation of the forces in x direction what force do we have in x direction the applied force which is 220 minus the friction force which is opposing the motion okay since there is acceleration we replace this with mass times acceleration so we're going to say mass times acceleration is equal to the force minus in the f cam okay so we divide both sides by mass even here by mass these two are going to cancel out we can see that in our acceleration in this case we're going to have is going to be the force minus the friction force divided by the mass acceleration the force is 220 minus the friction is 188.65 then we divide this one by the mass which is 55 now we can get rid of this you can see that acceleration is going to be 220 minus 188.65 that is giving me that 1.35 I divide this by 55 so I'm getting the answer to be 0 0.57 meters per second squared as simple as that so this is going to be my acceleration in this case so that is it for question three for question seven number eight a coefficient of static friction between the teflon and the crumbled x is about 0 0.04 what is the smallest angle from the horizontal that will, will cause the x to slide across the bottom of the teflon coated skillet so what it means here is um this question they're just telling us to say it is uh, on an incline so it's just a small angle so let's assume that this is just a small angle okay on an incline but we have just a small 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 angle 
So this angle we are going to call it theta. So we assume that here is our egg. Okay. Here is our egg. Now, if there is friction, we know that eh, friction always opposes motion. Friction will be there. Then, what we have to understand again is that eh, we are going to have, eh, on an incline, there is always the force that tries to bring an object down. That force is the Fg. So, this egg is not moving at all, meaning that the net force in this case is going to be zero. So, we are going to say the summation of all the forces in x direction this is the x direction we're talking about we have the fg trying to bring an object down the egg down then the friction force is opposing the motion the net force is zero we're going to say zero is going to be equal to fg minus fk now from here we can see that we can shift this fg to the other side is going to be negative fg is going to be equal to negative fk negative and negative can cancel and i'm going to remain with the fg is equal to fk now from this point we know that fg is trying to bring an object down this egg is going to have the normal force which is going to be here which is the the, the weight force this weight force is going to have the y component and the x component Okay, so the theta which is formed here is the same as the theta which is going to be formed there. Therefore, what we have to understand here is that this is opposite, meaning if this is mg, this is going to be mg sine theta. If this is the op uh, adjacent, meaning this is mg cos theta, then you have got the normal force now of this egg. So, on an incline, what we have to understand is that fg is is going in the, they are in the same direction with mg sin theta so fg is going to be equal to mg sin theta then the normal force is going to be mg cos theta okay now we do know that this is fg so i'm going to replace this fg with mg sin theta it has to be equal to mu times the normal force but we know that the normal force is mg cos theta so we're going to say mg sin theta is going to be equal to mu times mg cos theta now from here i can cancel the mg and here mg and as we can see we have not been given the mg here so to create space i'll get rid of this and i'm going to remain now with um, uh, sin theta to be equal to mu cos theta remember our goal is to find the mu value okay the coefficient of static so the question is saying find the coefficient of static friction so we have this coefficient of static friction and our goal is to find the mu value the the theta now the static if there is static friction meaning the object is not moving that's the reason why we have said that the net force in this case is going to be zero if they give you um kinetic of uh, friction meaning that that object was moving we definitely expect to have uh we expect to have acceleration and the net force cannot be equal to zero in that case so now i'm going to divide both sides by cos theta even here by cos theta and i can see that these two can cancel sine over cos is tan this is going to give us tan theta so tan theta is going to be equal to mu s now i can divide both sides by tan even here by tan meaning that what i'm having now is um, tan and tan will cancel we're going to remain with theta is going to be this is same as one over tan times mu s so one over tan it is the same as tan inverse so theta will be equal to tan inverse mu s let's plug in the values theta will be equal to tan inverse 0 0.04 so we expect our theta to be what is um we do shift then tan open bracket 0 0.04 i close the brackets so this is giving me 2.29 so 2.29 degrees that's my small angle 
So that is it for question 8. In this tutorial, we are going to solve a very interesting question under Newton's laws of motion. So, here is our question. When the three blocks in the figure below are released from rest, they accelerate with the magnitude of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Block 1 has, uh, has mass m, block 2 has mass 2m, and block 3 has mass 2m. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between block 2 and the table? So we do know that if we have friction here, the, the friction is going to be present um, on block 2 only because block 2 is the one which is in contact with the table. Block 1 and block 3, they are in free form. Okay, they are not in contact with the table. So what we are going to do here, we need to come up with the forces acting uh, on, on uh, block 1, block 2, as well as block 3. Okay, so there we go. Let's start with M1 or block 1. Now this block 1, we can see that if I can get this block 1 and put it here. So let's say this is our block 1. Okay, it's just a small block. What we have to understand here is that we have been told that the mass is just m. Meaning that this block is going to have, let's assume that we have got the tension, this tension let's call t1, this tension let's call t2. This tension, the tension from this point all the way to this point is going to be the same and the tension from this point all the way to this point is going to be the same because it is connected to the same loop. Okay? So now what we have to understand here is that we are going to have the tension pointing upward, which is going to be T1. We are going to have the weight of M1, which is going to be M, uh, Mg. Now this object, we have been told that this system is going to go in this direction. So if it is going in that direction, which we should, we should understand to say, the acceleration in this case for M1 is going to be pointed upward. And this acceleration is going to be positive because it is pointing upward. Okay? So we are going to say the summation of all the forces in y direction. In that case, we are going to have the tension force pointing upward minus the mg. mg is pointing downward, so that's why I'm going to say minus mg. We have acceleration, we are going to say mass is going to be just mass times acceleration is going to be equal to T1 minus mg. Okay, now I'm going to call this one to say this is my equation 1. So this equation, let's put it here to say our equation 1 is um, M1, we have um, MA is equal to T1 minus MG. Okay, this is our equation 1. Let's leave it there. Now we are done with the M1. Let's go to... to uh, block 2 now. Block 2 we can see that there is friction there. So block 2 here is our block 2. There is a tension which is pointing toward positive x-axis which is T2. There is another tension which is pointing what? Toward the um, negative x-axis which is T1. But again there is friction. So if this object is moving in this direction, meaning that there is also friction which is opposing the motion. So we're going to have also friction force in that direction. Okay? Meaning that the summation of all the forces in x direction, in this case, we have acceleration, so we have T2 pointing toward positive minus T1 minus the friction force. So friction force and tension force, they are moving in the same direction, that's why they are carrying uh, posit uh, negative, they are opposing the motion. Okay. Now from here what we need to understand is that since there is acceleration, we have been told that the mass of block 2 is 2m here is 2m. So I'm going to replace here with, it's supposed to be mass times acceleration, but that mass is 2. So it's supposed to be 2m a is going to be equal to t2 minus t1 minus. The friction force is mu times the normal force. Now the normal force, we know that the normal force in this case is going to be 2 times mg because the mass is 2, so I'm going to replace this with 2mg. Okay. Now let's call this to be our equation 2. 
so we are done with that one so we're going to call this one to be our equation 2 so we can just put it here to say we have 2m a is equal to t2 minus t1 again minus mu 2 or I can just put 2 here I put 2 mu times mg so this is my equation 2 now let's go to m3 block 3 in short so block 3 if I can get block 3 here what are we going to see now here is our block 3 we have been told that the mass is also 2m meaning that the weight of this block is going to be 2mg there is a force which is pointing upward which is the tension force but what we have to understand is that the block now is moving is going downward remember block 1 the, the block was going upward that's why we took acceleration to be positive now in this case block 3 the op this system is moving in this direction therefore the block is, is going downward the acceleration now is going to be negative so we're going to say the summation of all the forces in y direction we're going to have the tension force pointing upward which is t2 minus we're going to have 2 mg but the acceleration now is going to be negative since the mass is 2 is going to be negative 2 mm the mass is 2 m we have been told that block 3 is going to be 2m here that's why I'm replacing with 2m so we're going to have 2m minus this is going to be t2 then minus this we're going to call this to be equation 3 now this equation 3 let's leave it there so we have negative 2ma to be equal to t2, t2 minus 2 mg this is t3 that is our equation 3 now that we have our equation 3 we have the um, we have our equation 3 equation 1 and equation 2 what we have to remember here is that we don't have tension force but our goal is to find this coefficient of uh, kinetic friction so what we have to do is we have to make uh, in equation 1 here I'm going to make t1 as a subject of formula once I make that t1 as a subject of formula I'm going to replace it in what in e equation 2 again in equation 3 I'm going to make t2 as a subject of formula because I'm trying to eliminate the tension force so in equation 1 we have m1 ma is equal to t1 minus mg I want to make t1 as a subject of formula then it's going to be ma I'll shift mg this side is going to be like this is equal to t1 in equation 2 where there is t2 where there is t1 I'm going to replace with what I'm going to replace with I'm going to replace with uh, ma plus mg so this is t1 here so where there is t1 there I'm going to replace with what I'm going to have 2 ma is going to be equal to t2 minus where there is t1 I'm going to put m a plus mg then minus mu we have uh, 2 mu mg okay that is our equation now meaning we are done with this equation equation 1 also we have modified this one we are remaining with one now so now the final one is going to be 2 ma minus t2 minus ma minus I'm distributing the negative mg then we're going to have minus 2 mu mg now in this third equation so this equation here let me just put it here I'm going to put it here to say we have 2 ma minus or oh, this has to be equal to okay this is equal to this is equal to so we have 2 ma is equal to t2 minus ma minus mg then again minus 2 mu mg now we can get rid of this now we are trying to eliminate now we have now two equations so we have this equation here and this one but we want to eliminate tension force now in the third equation I'm going to make t2 as a subject of formula so I have this to be equal to t2 minus 2 mg I want to make t2 as a subject of formula I'm going to shift this to the left hand side 
So I'm going to have I'll start with the same one. I'm going to have 2mg. I'm just shifting this to the left hand side. Then this is going to be minus. I'm, I'll just write this minus 2mm. This is going to be equal to t2. Now after making t2 as a subject of formula, meaning that in the this equation which we just modified here, where there is t2, we replace with the, this equation. As simple as that. So now I'm going to write that one to say is 2 m a to be where there is t2. I'm going to put 2 m g minus 2 m a. I'm just replacing with this. Then I'm going to write the rest. I have minus m a minus m g minus 2 mu mg now we can get rid of this we no longer need this now we have one equation we have eliminate uh, we have removed the tension force so this is the equation which we have now but we know that we can modify this equation and say we have 2 ma is going to be equal to i can add this and this which is going to give me what it's going to give me is minus so i'm going to say it's going to give me just mg then at the same time I have 2 m a minus 2 mu m g. Now remember our goal is to find the value of mu. I'm going to shift I'm going to shift um this part here. It has to go to the left hand side and then I'm going to shift this to the right hand side. So if I shift that one I'm going to have 2 mu g is going to be equal to i have mg minus 2 m a again minus 2 um m a these two can be added okay which is going to give us negative 4 so we have 2 mu mg is going to be equal to mg minus 4 m a now from here this is our equation we can see that we can see m everywhere we can cancel the m and we are going to end up having this just get rid of this we're going to end up having this equation now we're going to have 2 mu g is going to be equal to g minus 4 times acceleration so we can divide both sides by 2g even here by 2g so these two can cancel this can cancel we can see that the mu k will be equal to g minus 4a over 2g now let's plug in the values we have everything now there so we have the mu k is going to be because the g is 9.8 minus 4 the acceleration is 0.5 we have been given the acceleration here, which is 0.5. Then we divide it by 2 times 9.8. So our mu k is going to be 9.8 minus. So what is uh, 0.5 times 4? It's giving me 2. I'm going to divide this one by 19.6. Because 2 times um, 9.8 is 19.6. So we can see that our mu k is going to be equal to 9.8 minus 2 with 7 is giving me 7.8. 7.8 divided by 19.6. So this is giving me 0 0.39. It's giving me 0 0.39795. So I can round it off and say mu k is going to be 0 0.4. So this is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.4. Okay.